So in this video, which is really a continuation of the last video, what we want to do is actually set up the JDBC data source like we had talked about. Now, the way we're going to do this is by running a series of commands. And once these commands are running, you can actually view them. And by view them, what I really mean is you can right click here on your integration server, or sorry, on your integration node, not the server, and then click on start web user interface. And that will bring you in here. And now if you go to your integration node, your broker, and then you go into operational policy and go down to JDBC providers, and then you will be able to see, or actually I should say, configurable services, JDBC providers, you can click on any of these. So this is kind of the, the generic provider that we had already talked about, and we have one for CFDB as well. Notice this one is actually not um, running as was, right? It's not, uh, this is actually built into the integration node itself. So this is kind of its own uh, world, right, of JDBC provider. We didn't see that in the was server server uh, configuration so here it is and uh, what we're going to do is essentially kind of create this or, or modify this if it's already here okay so let's get started the first thing we're going to do is log into the core server which i've done here we need to log in log in as the mq broker user and we need to load its profile so that's the dot syntax that we've been using and now what we need to do is run this first command and what first of all let's go ahead and run it make sure we don't get any errors and we don't now what did that do exactly well what it did was it first mentioned the name of the integration node so that's our broker and it used a dash n so dash n will create something called a security identity and that security identity is arbitrary but we're going to later use it to connect back to um, what is some what's called a configurable service which we're about to do so the security identity you can call this db2sec pretty much whatever you want but then you need to refer to this same db2sec later which we're going to do and really all the security identity is doing is saying okay what is the username and the password that will have access that you want in your database of course ours is db24 core and that's so there's a username and that's the password so this is going this is providing security details for our connection so that takes us to something called a JDBC configurable service, which is a set of attributes that can be accessed at runtime. And any changes that you make uh, can be made without the need for redeployment, which will save you some time. That's pretty nice. It says in our case, our, this erases any previous configuration. So they're talking here about the, what we're going to do next, which is to delete the CFDB configurable service, and then we're going to put it back in. And then per the key, KB or the Knowledge Center, uh, it completes, it should say KC, not KB, it completes a connection to the runtime database. So what is it exactly that we're doing here? Well, the first thing is we're going to do an MQSI delete configurable service, and we're going to give it the name of the integration node. And then, of course, we have dash C, which is, that defines the type of the configurable service. So this is just a predefined type called JDBC providers. And then we're going to give it a dash O, which will define the name of the JDBC configurable service. So we're going to call it, the configurable service CFDB. And then in the next command, we're going to do a dash in, which will define the list of the properties that you must set to configure the JDBC connection. And these properties are required by the mapping node if you wanted to use a mapping node. And then in dash V, we're also going to use, that will give the actual value. So dash in is just the list of properties and dash V is the values that you're going to give them. So the first thing that we're gonna do is go down to this uh, delete configurable service I'm going to paste it in here press enter and then it will say either if you don't have one it will say that you don't that's what we're getting here and if you already had one and you deleted it which is really what I've done then you'll see this so remember that we had seen JDBC providers and there was one called CFDB well we deleted it and so it's no longer here and by we, I mean me, and of course I just did that prior to running this video, so you could see the difference. Okay, now in the next command, we're going to actually create that configurable service. So let's copy and paste this in here. And this, this we don't actually have to fill in values for the user and the password. This is literally just the connection format string, so which should be looking, which should look something like this. Now, what you'll notice here 
and this may seem strange, is that then we are now going to, we just ran MQSI create configurable service, and now we're going to do a bunch of changing to it. And you might think, well, why are we doing a bunch of changing to it? Why didn't we just provide all of these N's and V's and N's and V's way up here? And the answer is that this would just be a huge, really difficult string to understand. It's very difficult to read visually, and that's why we keep repeating it here. And just so you can see the effect of this, so I didn't refresh this page at all. I just went back to it, and here is our CFDB with kind of the minimal information. Uh, it has now been created just like we asked. And this note here is basically just explaining, you know, if the, the, why we are running MQSI change repeatedly, like we just talked about. Um, and you may also notice this very first entry here, which we're going to do next, which will kind of associate the security identity that we, that we um, created earlier, that DB2SEC, which we put here. It's going to associate it with this configurable service. So that's the first thing. Let's do that. Let's make sure that that goes through. It did. And really, I'm just going to copy and paste all of these um, all the way down here. And we're going to look for any error messages. And no, we didn't get any. So this, actually, uh, what we're going to do in a, in a second here is do this MQSI report properties, and we'll see all the results of that. Or you could go to the web page and see that there as well. Now here in the next command, we're again, we're still doing MQSI change properties, but we're enabling this transaction support. And that's why you're seeing the XA listed here, like we sort of discussed earlier. And there we go. And now let's go down to these last two. And you can see what we're doing with connection pooling, which we kind of talked about in the last video showed in, in, a, in the architectural uh, diagram what that was. Now what this is going to do, MQSI report properties, is to tell us the results of essentially what we just did. And so here we go. These are the results. And these really should match what we've been looking at in the uh, web page. And here we go. This is the web page. And if you want to be extra careful, you can always, uh, to see if you've got the latest data, you can reload the page. And what's nice actually is that all of these ex uh, twisties will re-expand the way uh, the way you had selected them. So there we go. That should match what we just saw.